Welcome to Rick Rack Ruby. I'm Laura Clubo. Today we will be making the second project in our rainbow Christmas collection. It's the clothespin angel ornament. She's fun and easy, so let's get started. When I decided to commit to this rainbow Christmas idea, I just went out and got all the things. I got all the tool and all the colors and all the yarn and all the trims, even baker's twine in all the colors. I figured I could just mix and match components and have, you know, a rainbow. And <laughs> well, I quickly learned that it's better to have a little bit more of a focused palette. So for our next project, which will be a clothespin angel, we're going to focus on orange with pink and yellow. I had this one already with her. I colored in her feet with a hot pink marker to make some little shoes. I think that's cute, so I'm gonna use this one. I have a 12 inch piece of yellow tulle. Hope you can see that. And I'm going to fold it in half and gather it up. I have a doubled strand of quilting thread and a nice long needle, my trusty thimble. I'm gonna match up, I folded this in half. I'm gonna match up the edges and just gather this up along the fold. To start, should I move this out of the way? Is that too busy? I'll secure my thread and then I'll just sort of work along. It doesn't have to be perfect. In fact, you know, you can trim it at the end and to line everything up. So I'll just gather it up. Now this gathered edge, I'll place around the waist. Let's say um, about halfway between the neck and the split right here. So I'll join the ends. Make sure the ends are in the back. And then wrap nice and tight and then secure it on the back, secure the stitches in the back. And then of course I'm going to hot glue this to secure it. I think that's enough. Now I'll lift this up and apply some glue underneath here, press it down to secure. I just added a couple of smudges of glue to hold that. Now I can still see her feet. You can see that this, the three inches just goes down about to her ankles and that, that looks good, that's about what I want. Now I have a piece of the orange color collage fabric. It's two and a half wide and nine inches long. This is going to become her, her dress or her skirt. And so I will, first thing I wanna do is take my pinking shears and just pink the top edge. I'm so accustomed to working with um, the jelly roll strips that when I see all this, I, I kind of go crazy. So I'm going to pink the top. I'm doing this over my trash can so all those little pieces don't fall on my work surface. And I'm thinking I'm also going to pink the bottom edge, but I want to be sh uh, sure that I let you know that I'm not taking off a lot of fabric. I'm just taking off the very, very edge. The main focal color of this project is orange. So I've cut some felt with my die cutter and I've got some hearts and flowers and wings and all kinds of shapes. And I'm going to choose one of them for the bodice. I like to use the heart, but I want you to know that if you don't have exactly a one inch heart die cutter or die for your cutting machine, you know, you could use a flower. You can even cut out just a little rectangle. Um, it, the, every, anything will work. This is 100% wool felt. I like to work with wool felt. 
So I'm, this is going to become the bodice, so I'm gonna glue this right on her chest, just below her chin like this. Of course, I've already made the face, and um, you can find the instructions for the face in my Focus on Faces video. I'm gonna glue that a little better. And this is what I want, just so her, her chest is covered. Now this will become her dress. I'm going to add some trim to the bottom. I'm going to go with the pink for the trim. I was using that tape, the double-sided tape, to apply my trim in the last project, but the, the adhesive kind of gummed up my needle. And in the end, I just kind of became frustrated with that. So I'm just going to sort of hold it, and I know I'm not going to get it perfectly centered or exactly right, but I think it's going to be good enough. This trim is from Hobby Lobby, and the um, clothespin is also from Hobby Lobby. I like the clothespins that have a little bit longer head. I've sewn on the trim to the bottom edge, and I, I did a pretty good job. Now I'm going to uh, fold the short ends together and stitch up this uh, back seam. Now I'm gonna turn this to the right side and I'm going to gather up the top edge. I'm folding over the seam allowances to one side and I'm gonna secure my thread right there. And then I'll just gather up the top edge. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just in and out with a running stitch. Now I'll slide this over the head and secure it between the bodice and the tool. So there's about a half an inch of tool showing. And then I'll wrap this and secure it in the back. I rotated it so that the seam is in the back center. Now I'll add a little bit of glue to secure right here right under there and maybe a little under the front too, just a smudge of glue, not a big glob. Let's have a look. Now I am gonna bring this little daisy applique here, which will sort of conceal the stitches around her waist. But I think that looks good. Okay, we're gonna make a pom-pom for the hair. I've already made a couple, but I'm going to, um, this one I wrap 30 times each side. This one is 25. And I think I'm gonna go somewhere in between. Maybe we'll do 27. <laughs> and this is the Clover Pom Pom Maker, the purple one, which the size is 25, which means 25 millimeter. My yarn is from Hobby Lobby. I got this in all the rainbow colors. <laughs> yarn B, 99 cents. This is just acrylic yarn. I'm gonna wrap 27 times. One, two, three, four. Okay, so there's 27 on that side. Do seven on this side. One, two, three, four. Okay. Now you can trim these when you're done, but I'll just sort of trim them now. And then with big scissors, I'm going to cut up through this little slot. Get every single bit. Sometimes if there's one uncut strand in there, then when you try to open it up, it gets stuck. That looks good. Now I'll take a longer length to tie it off. Just go through the groove all the way around. Tie it off. I 
I like to tie it off on both sides. So I go around and tie it on, on one side and then I go back to the other side and really secure it. That looks good. And now the magic happens where you open up the pom-pom maker. Gently separate the sides. <laughs> Looks like a spider. And then I'm gonna just take my scissors and trim this to make more of a uniform shape. But I do like when it's a little scraggly. If you want a perfect pom-pom where you don't really see the individual strands, you can just buy them, right? So let's have this look a little bit more, um, you know, crafted. So this will be her hair. It's just one pom-pom glued to the top. It kind of reminds me of a Raggedy Ann. I like that. So I'm gonna open this up, make sure that I'm getting right into the center and apply a nice bead of glue, hot glue, and then I'll press that firmly onto the head, making sure that that is securely held. I can always trim. I'm not worried about this covering her face because I can always trim the bangs. It's covering the back of the head. That's good. And that feels very secure. Trim that a little, kind of even it out. Now I have some pink baker's twine and I'm going to sew a hanging loop. I'm sewing low and I can feel that I'm definitely sewing through the glue. So you don't want to just sew through the yarn. Make sure you get it nice and secure. And then I'll tie the ends into an overhand knot. That looks good. And then the halo. I have this um, 20 gauge wire. I'm gonna make my halo a little bit bigger. I want it to, to stand out around the pom-pom hair. So not really like buried into the hair, which is what I usually like, but this is a little bit more whimsical. So, I'm gonna turn the ends in a little bit like this, and then I'll add some glue to each end, and then I'll press that into the sides of the head. Now hold that for a second. That looks good. Okay, she's looking really good. Let's give her some arms. This is about a quarter of an inch that I cut from the edge of a piece of felt. And this will be her arms. She's not gonna hold anything. She's just gonna, you know, be standing there with all of her cuteness. But first I wanna glue on this applique, this little daisy. I'm gonna put that right on her waist. That looks good. I'll use a little more glue so that I can press those petals down on the sides. That looks good. This is what my felt looks like. It's a nice bright color of wool felt, which I really like. And then, let's see. Is that about five or six inches? Huh, nope, it's only four. <laughs> so that's four inches. I think four inches is the right amount. So I'm gonna fold this little strip. It's a quarter of an inch wide and about four inches long. I'm gonna apply some glue to the center right here and put that in the back. I'm gonna hold that for a second. Turn her arms in. Leave a little space here. Don't just, you know, bring it in really close. That's, you don't want that. Just a little bit of space. It gives her a little personality. And the arms don't have to be symmetrical. Um, you know, one could be a softer bend and one could be more of a bend. And then I'm gonna glue the hands more to the front. 
Yeah, so I'll put a little bit of glue here. Also, sometimes I like to, I forgot which direction, but you can cut them off at an angle like that and do it that way too. There are her hands. That looks good. Now for her wings, I've cut a little butterfly shape with my die cutting machine. Here is the die that I use to cut the wings, and this is Hero Arts, but there are plenty of other butterfly and wing shaped dies. You can find them anywhere. This one, when I cut it out, I had to hand cut the center because it didn't come. I, I, I can't explain it, but I just had to cut hand cut the center. Here's the smaller size. We'll have to use that for something else. I'm gonna use the bigger size. Now I also have some other colors in the same family. So I was wondering about the yellow. I think I might like the yellow. This is a bright yellow. I also have this sort of butter yellow, but that wasn't quite right. And I have fuchsia and red and pink even this sort of squashy color, but I think the yellow is the way to go. So I'll apply some glue to the center and glue it to the back. I didn't quite cover up my thread here these are the La Petite's pre-tied bows. These are from Michael's. <laughs> These have bailed me out many times. Whenever the paper aisle goes on sale, <laughs> I stock up on these. There we go, that's better. Wow, now she looks great from the side, from the front and the back. This is so cute. I'm gonna trim this a little in the back. It's a little bit long. she's done. Thank you for watching my tutorial. If you're enjoying my videos, please like, share, and subscribe.